Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to focus on MIDI quantization techniques. We're going to jump into the Piano Roll Editor in Logic in just a bit, and talk about different ways to quantize your MIDI recordings. I'll explain many of the most common quantization values, and I'll also show you how to input quantize. But before we get into that, I want to take a moment to tell you about the sponsor for this video, Boombox. If you're a musician, beat maker, producer, or mixing engineer, you've got to check out boombox.io. Boombox is a new website that allows you to upload your audio files all in one place, invite other collaborators, producers, or bandmates, and then receive timestamped production notes and feedback. I use Boombox every day to keep my mixing and mastering work organized, and it really helps me keep all of my feedback from my clients all in one place, instead of searching through millions of emails and texts to find my mixing revisions. Head over to boombox.io to check it out for yourself, and you'll get 10 gigabytes of free storage space. Okay, so in order to quantize anything, I need to record some MIDI first, so let's jump into Logic, and I'll do that. Okay, so I've got this chill out synth pad selected here, it just sounds like this. And to demonstrate all of the MIDI quantization values, instead of working up here in the region inspector, I'm gonna work down in the piano roll editor. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the count in and I'm just going to play in a few whole note chords. Okay, so I'm gonna double click on that MIDI region to open it up in the Piano Roll Editor. With the Piano Roll Editor, you can hide and show this by pressing P on your keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead and just hide the library as well so we can see all of these MIDI notes in here. And what you'll see is these chords, while they're just whole notes, you'll see that some of the notes are coming in ahead of the bar lines. Now, one thing we could do is we could click on this MIDI region, go over to the region inspector and select one one note, which is a whole note, or we could go down to, into the piano roll editor and then just select all of the notes. I can just press command A to do that, or you can drag over the notes. One of the things you'll notice is that when you select a note or drag over notes that the note will actually play. And that's because the MIDI out option is turned on here. You can turn this off by clicking on it or you can press option O in the piano roll editor to toggle this. So now when you drag over notes, the MIDI data will not be sent to the software instrument and you won't hear any sound. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag over all these notes and then over here in the time quantize menu, I'll just select one one note for a whole note and you'll see that all of the notes snap to the nearest whole note. So let's do this again, but this time I'm gonna use half notes, and I'm also gonna slow down the tempo a bit. 120 is a bit too fast, so I'll make this like 100. And you know what, I think I'm gonna swap this out for another instrument that doesn't have so much of a, a long release time on it that's not lingering around forever. In fact, I'm gonna go back to synthesizer strings and we'll go with the authentic strings we used in the previous video. And I think that'll work out a bit better. So here are our half note chords. So we're getting two beats per chord. Same thing as before, I can simply just drag over these notes, go to the time quantize menu and use the half note option. And all of those notes will quantize to the nearest half note. Now, there is a faster way to do this. You don't have to keep going back to the time quantize menu. You can actually use a shortcut for this. If you, instead of selecting the notes first, if you select the quantization value that you're using first, then select the notes. You can actually just press Q on your keyboard and this will quantize the notes as well. And you can even quantize notes in groups. You know, you don't have to quantize everything. So if I just wanna quantize these ones and maybe these ones, I can do that just by dragging over those notes and pressing Q on my keyboard, or you can press Q right here in the time quantize menu. So let's go ahead and delete this. Let's try something with quarter notes now. For this, I'm gonna create a new instrument. I'm gonna bring in some drums. So just go to electronic drum kit. Let's use one of these analog kits here. I'll use the same one I used last time. And I'm just gonna play a four on the floor kick. 
basically just that, just something really simple like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and layer a snare drum on top of that. So the whole drum part is just quarter notes. Should be very simple to quantize. So as I demonstrated before, you just select a quarter note, select all of the notes, and then hit Q and all of the notes sync up to or snap to the nearest quarter note. Now, if I were to go in and maybe add in some eighth notes, I'll do something like that. Let's open that up. And if I zoom in here, I'm actually pretty close to being on the grid, but not perfectly on the grid. If you want to select all of those notes that are the hi-hats without selecting the kick or snare, you can actually just click on the MIDI note here in the piano roll for that particular drum or that particular note, and it'll select all of those notes on that pitch. So it's selected all of the hi-hats on F sharp here. And now I can use the eighth note quantize option, and all of the notes snap to the nearest eighth note. So what happens if you use the wrong quantization value? Well, I'll show you. If I were to quantize all of these notes to say half notes, watch what happens. They're all gonna snap to the nearest half note and we're not gonna get any of those eighth notes. We're not gonna get any of the floor, uh, four on the floor kick. If I snap to quarter notes, the hi-hats are not gonna be in the correct place. But if I do everything to eighth notes, it'll be just fine. All of the notes will snap to the nearest eighth note. Let's go ahead and add something else to this. Let's add like a, maybe like a syncopated uh, bass line or something. So I'll do something like that. And my chords here are A minor, F and E minor. So I'll try to follow that, uh, those chords in the bass line. Pull those chords way down in the mix. Let's open up that bass line. And now you can see we're starting to snap to 16th notes. So sometimes it helps, like if you're not really like familiar with music theory or rhythms and, and rhythmic values, sometimes it really helps to set your grid to the value that you're trying to quantize to or the value you think you're supposed to quantize to. So right now, by default, the grid is set to 16th notes. So you can see that I have notes here on the grid that are off of the quarters, that are off of the half notes, that are off of the eighths. Because if I quantize this to eighth notes right now, you'll see that not all of the rhythms are correct. Some of these notes get collapsed down to eighth notes uh, unnecessarily. So what I'll do instead is select 16th note, select all the notes, hit Q, and now everything is quantized to a 16th note. I'll come up here and just shorten that, and then hit Command R to repeat it. And then let's just loop all of this and see what that bass line sounds like. Now, some of these other quantization values in here, you have 30 second notes. So that's, you know, one division higher or one division faster than a 16th note. Essentially, if you split a 16th note in half, you get 30 second notes and then 64th notes, which I almost never use. But some of these other values I want to show you are these triplet values. If you're trying to compose something that has more of a triplet groove to it or a swung groove to it, sometimes it can help to use a triplet grid and then use some of these triplet quantization values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the chords there. I'm going to start over with my drums and bass. And this time I'm going to change my grid from 16th notes to 12th notes, which is eighth note triplets. So now um, when I play something in, I'm going to sort of do like a three division per beat rhythm. Let's 
do hi-hats now. And if you look at the grid now, each beat is divided into groups of three rather than groups of four, like it was with 16th notes. So we have a completely different groove now. So what I can do is I can select a eighth note triplet as my quantization value, select these notes, hit Q, and now the notes will snap to that 12th note or eighth note triplet grid. If I were to use a 16th note grid instead, look what happens. Nothing snaps to the grid lines because we're snapping to a different grid division. We're not snapping to a triplet grid. We're snapping to a straight 16th note grid. So I'll just hit Command uh, Z to undo that. And by the way, if even if you've quantized notes many, many steps ago, you can actually unquantize notes just by selecting them. And you go back to the time quantize menu and you just select off, or you can press Option Command Q and that will undo the quantization. So then I'll select all. Let's quantize this to an eighth note triplet. And let's go ahead and just shorten this up. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, let's add a bass on this. Same thing, I'm gonna use more of a, a triplet feel here. So now I can open up my bass MIDI region here, and you can see that most of the notes are pretty close to uh, that 12th note or 8th note triplet grid. I can select these, and because I already have the 8th triplet value selected, there's no need to reselect it. So I can just select those notes and hit Q. So that's the great thing about this sort of workflow is if you're doing a lot of quantization with one value, like 8th note triplets or 16th notes or 8th notes, you just select that value in the piano roll editor, and then with every MIDI recording you make, you just hit Command A to select all, Q to quantize, and then move on to your next region or your next recording. So it makes it really sort of quick and efficient. Now, let's say that you want a recording to not be so robotic and perfectly in time. You can actually pull down the quantization strength here. So if you pull this back from 100%, you'll see those notes start to drift apart and they sort of drift away from their intended target. And what this is great for is it sort of humanizes the performance a bit, but still keeps things locked into the grid. So maybe I'll pull this back to around 80% and maybe I'll do the same thing for my drums. I'll just select all of these. Now notice that this is already set to a strength of 81. One thing that's a bit confusing about Logic's piano roll is that the changes you make in the piano roll are not locked into a particular region. The values you see here in the time quantize menu and the quantize strength, these are not set on a region by region basis. All it does is it remembers the last value that you used. So what you have to do is with nothing selected, just deselect everything, click on the background. I'll pull the strength back up to 100%, select all of these notes, unquantize them, and then set the quantization strength you want, we'll say around 80%. Set the time quantize to eighth note triplet, select the notes, hit Q, and we're good to go. And then if I want to make further adjustments with the quantization strength, I can do that. So let's see what this sounds like with a bit more of a humanized feel to it. And if you're going to be doing a lot of recording and quantizing to the same MIDI values over and over and over again, there is a quick workaround that's called input quantize. And what input quantize does is it sets the quantization value up front and all notes you play from that 
point forward will be quantized to that value until you turn off the input quantization. Now, in order to do input quantization, you have to do this from the region inspector. You cannot do this from the piano roll editor. So all you do is you click on the background to deselect any regions, and then you go up to the region inspector and you change the quantization value to whatever it is you want as your input quantization value. So I'm going to set this to eighth note triplets. And now any recordings I make with my piano instrument will automatically be quantized to an eighth note triplet. Now, if I open that up, you'll see that every single one of those notes has been automatically quantized to an eighth note triplet grid. So now when I play this back, it's gonna be perfectly in time. Now, one last thing I wanna show you here is the swing quantization. Before I do that, I need to turn off my input quantization. So what you do is you just select the background to deselect any regions, go to the region inspector and turn off the MIDI quantization, which turns off the input quantize. So now what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually play something that sounds like straight eighth notes, but then I'm gonna quantize it so that it's swung and matches up with the triplet feel of what I have here. I'm gonna open this up. I made one little mistake here, so I'll delete that. And you'll hear that if I play back the bass and drums, this isn't gonna make much sense because I have this straight eighth note idea playing on top of a triplet idea. So I get this three against two thing going on. So we need to fix that. So what I can do is I can select all of these notes. I can quantize them to a straight eighth note, and that's going to put them perfectly in time as an eighth note. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this swing quantize slider and watch what happens to every other eighth note. It's going to drift away from the first eighth note. So if you think of your eighth notes in like groups of two, that second note is gonna drift away from the first one, giving it more and more swing. So this way you can sort of control how much swing you want. You can do 100% swing, which is gonna be very close to like a, uh, a triplet grid, or you can make this a little more subtle and pull those swung notes forward. And there you go, that's swing quantize. So that's the basics of quantizing in Logic Pro, as well as using swing quantization and input quantization. There's a lot more to know about quantizing in Logic, and there are many other quantization features in Logic, including the ability to quantize audio recordings with flex time, but we'll have to come back to that in a future video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.